Since I have made a few videos on the brand new Apple MacBook Pro 14 inch, I keep getting asked a few questions about it. So I thought I would make this video and answer some of the most common questions and talk about why you should save your money and go for the cheapest baseline model MacBook Pro 14 inch. The cheapest one you can buy. Let's get into it. Now very quickly, just before we go any further, if you're new here to this channel, my name is Scott Edwards. I make all sorts of photography, video and tech related videos. So if they are the sorts of things you are interested in, consider clicking that little subscribe button that's just down below there and come and be a part of this community, which is growing very quickly at the moment. So it's very exciting. So the first question I get asked quite a lot is, does it overheat? And the answer is, no, I've never had a problem with the heat that this thing produces. I used to own the old MacBook Pro 16 inch and that used to get insanely hot. So hot that you couldn't really put it on your lap when you were using it because it got that hot. This one, it gets warm and it will get warmer when it's doing heavy tasks. So when it's doing a lot of heavy rendering, then it will warm up. And where it gets warmest is right in the middle of the keyboard, because I believe that is where the M1 Pro chip sits, is directly in the middle of the computer. So around the keyboard, you will start to notice it getting a little bit warmer when you are doing some heavier tasks. And for the rest of the time when you are just doing day-to-day -day things, maybe you're web browsing, doing a bit of light video editing, it will just run completely cool and you will not even notice it warming up in the slightest. And for something that's this portable and this powerful, that is so impressive. It is so much better than the old Intel MacBook Pros. It just has a much better cooling system. Now that might be because it is slightly thicker than the old MacBook Pros. However, again, I've mentioned this in previous videos, I really do not mind the thickness at all, especially if it means you get slightly better cooling as well, because that is only a big advantage. Now, if you are torn between the 14 and the 16 inch MacBook Pro to stay the coolest, if that makes sense, the 16 inch MacBook Pro might potentially stay a little bit cooler because there is more room inside it to have increased airflow. I'm not sure what that was. I'm imitating the fans. But anyway, you might get increased airflow in the 16 inch version of this M1 Pro laptop. However, with this, you are not going to have a problem with overheating at all. And when it does get slightly warmer, the fans kick in they are still incredibly quiet. You can barely hear them. I think I've had them come on maybe once or twice since I've had this in about the month I've had it. But you will not have a problem with this because it's just cool and quiet. So good. The battery life is probably one of my favorite features on this brand new MacBook Pro. And I have edited full videos on one charge without it being plugged in and still had at the end of that edit, maybe 30 or 40% battery life. That is incredible. And I'm not talking small videos either. They were decent sized videos. They were 10 to 12 minute YouTube videos with color corrections, sound adjustments, motion plugins and titles and all sorts. So they were fairly hefty files, but the battery life, it just doesn't suffer at all. And when you are using it on battery power, you still have all of the power that you can get. It doesn't lose power from not being plugged in. Does that make sense? It is still just as capable purely on battery life. To do all of that on one charge is just insane. And while we're talking about the battery, I also have the smallest MagSafe charger, which I believe is 67 watts. If you're thinking about upgrading just because of a quicker charger or just buying a quicker charger in general, I really don't think you need to because this thing charges from empty to full in around about an hour and a half. And to me, I don't think that's really very slow. I think that's actually pretty quick. So again, the battery life is insane and the smallest MagSafe charger is quick enough as well. It does a really good job. Is the notch a problem? No, who cares about the notch? It's not a problem, you can't see it. 
Is the 14 inch MacBook Pro too small for video editing? Now in the past I have owned both 13 inch MacBook Pros and the old 16 inch Intel MacBook Pro and there's pros and cons to both sizes. The 13 inch I always found was a little bit fiddly for video editing because all of the icons are so much smaller, you get a much smaller viewing window, the timeline is much smaller. It, it's okay for video editing on, but I, I did struggle with the 13 inch Pro sometimes. On the other hand, the 16 inch MacBook Pro was incredible for video editing on. I loved the screen size, I loved how big the trackpad was, everything just felt spacious, everything was easy to see on the screen, you get a much bigger viewing window. However, when it came to traveling with the 16 inch MacBook Pro or taking it out to work in maybe a coffee shop or something like that, then it became a bit of an issue because it was so big. I could barely fit it into my Peter McKinnon camera bag and that's got a pretty big camera compartment on it. So I had to really jam it in there. This, this is I think the perfect middle ground between the 13 and the 16 inch MacBook Pro. The screen size, I do not have an issue with the screen size. I can edit video on it for hours comfortably with the 14 inch display. I absolutely love it. And again, the trackpad is a perfect size. It's slightly bigger than it was on the old 13 inch MacBook Pro, I think anyway, I might be wrong, but it feels it. And it is perfect to travel with. You can easily get it into your camera bag because the size of it in reality isn't much bigger than the old 13 inch MacBook Pro. I think it's pretty much identical apart from the thickness that may be a little bit wider or something like that, but it's, it's very similar in size to the old 13 inch MacBook Pro, but the extra screen size really makes a massive difference. And I think it is the perfect laptop to edit all of your video on, whether you're sat at your desk or you're taking it out to a coffee shop or to travel with. The cheapest MacBook Pro is absolutely perfect for video editing and pretty much anything you can throw at it unless you are throwing some pretty heavy stuff at it like multiple streams of 8k video but let's be realistic i've said this in previous videos as well not many people are doing that at the moment pretty much everyone is still maybe filming in 1080 but most people are filming in 4k and this just breezes through it it really does so hopefully that answers some of your questions you might have about the 14 inch MacBook Pro and has convinced you to go with the cheapest MacBook Pro 14 inch. There really isn't many things that I dislike about this. I, I don't think I can find anything. I love it. I love the ports, HDMI, SD, MagSafe, you've got three USB-C or Thunderbolt ports. I love the design. It's my favorite computer I've ever used and I will be using it for a very, very long time. I love everything about it. And I did try and stop myself buying it, but I, I, I fell into the trap and bought it. One last thing I really like about it is the speakers on this are incredible. I have edited full videos using just the built-in speakers on this laptop. I've never done that with any other video. So that itself, it blows my mind how good this thing is. And I truly believe that the cheapest model with just 16 gigs of RAM and 512 gigs of storage is plenty enough for most people. If Again, if you are doing some pretty heavy tasks, you might want to look at upgrading to maybe 32 gigs of RAM or 64, or maybe even the M1 Max chip. But the cheapest MacBook Pro M1 Pro is, to me, a no-brainer. If you're just looking for a more than capable computer to handle everything you throw at it, what, well, I've gone a bit David Brent there. You could be in the hot seat, like me. Yeah, this is the perfect laptop. Now, if you want to upgrade your M1 Pro laptop to maybe more RAM or more storage, Go for it, I don't think you'll regret it at all because you are future-proofing yourself, it will last you a hell of a long time. But if it's just storage you're after, maybe use external drives, that's what I use and it is a hell of a lot cheaper than upgrading the internal storage on this because that is very expensive. So if you're gonna upgrade one area, I'd maybe upgrade the RAM first and then just use external drives. That's just my personal preference though. But yeah, go for the base model, you will not regret it. So if you like what you see on this channel, don't forget to click that little subscribe button just down below there and come and be a part of this community. 
And yeah, that's it for this video. I shall see you all very soon in the next one. I'm liking this setup because I've got my iPad literally directly under my camera so I can have my notes. That's what I was trying to say. My brain went...